I'm excited to see this one. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. So this is one I purchased from a viewer who's never had a Les Paul before and thought he would try this gorgeous one, and he just decided, yeah, this shape isn't for him. But wow, that is a good top. Let's learn about this model. Believe it or not, this is actually just a regular Gibson 60s Les Paul standard, but you're probably confused. I don't remember this ocean water finish being part of the original lineup. That's because this is an American Musical Supply exclusive, and I've been wanting to review one of these ever since we saw them get teased in the Andertons factory tour, because you would see these Les Pauls that have these really cool aqua bluish green backs, and everybody's like, what model is that? What model is that? And then, yeah, it turns out it was a dealer exclusive. So this is a triple A quilt top. It's something you actually have to pay quite a hefty premium for over a regular 60s standard. They're available on their website for $3,299. That is a $300 upcharge over a regular flame top model. But they have them in this ocean water finish as well as Honey Burst, if that's a little bit more to your flavor. When these things first came out, there were some impressive tops. But you can go to their website now and choose what you want. And some of the later ones that have been coming in haven't been quite as impressive, in my opinion. But if you like quilt tops, Guitar Center also has a new one in Dark Purple Burst. That's right, the old Gibson.com exclusive that they're advertising as a regular quilt top. It doesn't have the AAA associated with it, and it's a little bit cheaper at $3,099, but still a premium over your regular price. So when Dylan said, hey, I'm selling one, are you interested? I figured, yeah, why as well? This is just a gorgeous little guitar. So 60s Les Paul standards, they were introduced in 2019. As far as Gibson realigning the regular production line of things, trying to make everything make sense. In fact, if you want to see a launch model, you can check out this episode right here. And we've checked them out a few years past then. So it's not necessarily a special review in that aspect. It's just, yeah. For Gibson USA, this top is phenomenal. However, there was a limited edition run in 2020 called the Goro Yudo. That's an anime signature guitar that Gibson did. It started off as a custom shop R9, but they later did Gibson USA versions as well. So if you're looking for something a little bit more limited, but in a similar color, you might check out one of those. And these will generally have a slightly less premium nature to them since they weren't Japan exclusives. However, I'm personally a big fan of the whole bluish green back. Keen-eyed viewers might have noticed something was amiss when I first opened the case. Something happened in transit. This knob got like smashed. There's cracks underneath it and the topper fell off and it was all bent up. But a little bit of super glue and we're good to go. But besides just the beautiful guitar, what else do we get? Just your standard Gibson case of this era. It's the square latched version with the Gibson on the outside, brown exterior. But now our case candy. We got a pick guard should we wish to install it. Not gonna lie, that looks pretty good. However, this is just such a nice top, you gotta expose it. We've got the Gibson basic strap, case keys and spare truss rod cover, warranty information mixed with the pre-packed checklist, as well as the Gibson app and silica packet, polishing cloth, owner's manual, and lastly, the Gibson multi-tool. So to learn more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the ocean blue top, I do want to make mention, in person it's more of an aqua blue, it shows up as like a dark nordic blue in the camera though. It is a very fascinating finish, but let's go ahead and check out our pickups, because they cleaned up beautifully. No more gunk on our covers. But it's the Rhythm 61 in the neck, and the Lead 61 in the bridge. Those are the 60s burst bucker sets, so that's all the same. Now within the circuit, the middle is 3.91, bridge is 777, and the neck 787. Inside our neck pickup cavity, that's fun. The reason why the back is green but the top is blue comes down to the color of wood underneath. So this is the mahogany color, this is the white maple. This finish just varies what it looks like on the different surfaces, and this is very good proof of that. So we have a 03. I would assume that might stand for ocean water, but the water's like in a different orientation. But there's a good cross section of your maple top joining onto the mahogany body. But here's our bridge pickup route, it's got a whole bunch of stuff going on. LPS, Les Paul Standard, L maybe for limited edition, Q3, A stands for the 3A quilt top, and then 23 for the year of production. That'd be a quick guess based on what I see. Not the cleanest routes we've ever seen out of Gibson though. Pretty rough actually, on this edge. And this one over here. But the surface is nice and smooth. 
Like with most 60s Les Paul standards, they have a real Gibson ABR1 bridge, but it's mounted on Gibson Nashville style studs. I call them the faux BR1s. But the nice thing about those is you have Allen key adjustment right here if you don't want to use your thumb wheels. And it is a lightweight aluminum tailpiece by Advanced Plating. This guitar wasn't too dirty, but I decided to polish it up anyways, just on the off chance that this top could get any more crazy. I just love it. It's so active. Sometimes quilt tops can be not as active as some flames, but this just has like an interesting bubble feature. It works really well with the color. I think it was somewhere around 2016, there was a Les Paul standard that also had a similar finish, but it did the abalone inlays, which would look incredibly cool on this guitar, but maybe a little bit over the top, depending on who you ask. But here's our knobs, two volumes, two tones. Here's a close-up look at the one that got damaged. I don't understand how that happened. Falling off, yeah, that happens often enough, but it got like bent up and smashed. So I had to have got pinned between something in the case and whatever did that. So underneath this knob, it is cracked, but it still functions as of right now. And I just glued that back down. But any fancy stuff? Nope. Just a regular Les Paul with no pick guard holes. Moving on from our maple top and mahogany body, we've got that mahogany neck with the rosewood fretboard. The grain is very proud on this fretboard. When you feel it, it has a lot of texture to it. And there was an area on the fretboard right here that looked like some paint got on it, but it was probably more so the pore filler. Like you can see a little bit right here, but thankfully a razor blade was able to take most of what I was talking about off. I measure a 1.7 inch nut width, increasing to 2.09 at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.82 and 0.91 by the 12th. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. Just a nice slim C with our black side marker inlays, although the red tortoiseshells would actually look pretty cool on this. Here's the face of the headstock. Nothing too crazy up here. Just our Mother of Pearl logo with our Les Paul model silk screen and our truss rods looking good. And here's a look at our cover, the regular standard that it ships with. Moving on to the back. We can see it's a two-piece mahogany body. You've got a lot of nice light wood grain. However, this guitar does feel kind of heavy. But here's what our inside control cavity looks like. Just all our usual Gibson wiring with our cream jack plate, large strap buttons in the normal locations. And there's our toggle switch cavity. And we utilize black back plates. And we'll take a quick tour up the neck here. And we can see we've got the Grover tuners on this model. And our serial number dates it to the 270th day of 2023. But also undone, not as bad as I thought it was going to read. Just a hair under nine and a half pounds. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how this one sounds.
Now that we know all about this ocean water quilt top Les Paul 60 standard, what are my final thoughts? Out of all the custom color series and all the other ones that we've seen out of the original collection, this has to be my favorite looking Les Paul that you can buy. Like not all of them have quite as good of a top as this, but that is the nice thing about their website is you can at least see what you're going to get. I'm so happy I was able to get one of these and try it out. If you're interested in being the next owner of this one, I guess we can talk about it. I mean, this is really nice. Is it collection worthy? I bet in 10 to 20 years they could be, depending on how many of these that they actually end up making. Generally speaking, a 60 standard is not considered a collectible model, but it is absolutely gorgeous. All right, troglodytes, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.